welcome to Q Aquatics and Exotics. My name's Susie and today we're talking about turtles. I have so many things to go over with you, but first I want to say Happy Father's Day to all the fathers out there and all the mothers that had to act like fathers. What a great day. Uh, unfortunately, my father has passed, but I wish everybody had, I hope everybody had an amazing Father's Day. Look at this. Hashtag Blake's Oddballs. I love it. Hey, Candy. I love it, love it, love it. And guess what I got fixed? So excited about this, too. Hey, everybody, it's Susie Q, and I'm here to show you just what I do. I have a passion for fish and exotics, too, so come along with me, it's Susie Q. Hey, everybody, it's Susie Q, and I'm here to show you just what I do. I got a passion for fish and exotics, too, so come along with me, it's Susie Q. Hey, everybody. Everybody, it's Susie Q, and I'm here to show you just what I do. I have a passion for fish and exotics, too, so come along with me, it's Susie Q. Hey, everybody, it's Susie Q. Hey, everybody, it's Susie Q. Nah, nah, hey, everybody, it's Susie Q, so come along with me. Said I'm Susie Q. <laughs> I got the volume fixed. Hey, and I saw that Chevy Fish tried to do the hashtag, but he put spaces where he shouldn't have. And I think he might have gotten a woo. So happy Father's Day, everybody. What a great Sunday. I thought it was going to rain all day. Kind of hoping it was going to rain today. But it did not rain today. So I want to show you something before I get into my turtle love. I think Candy noticed it. Wait till you see. I have grass. What? I'm telling you, this was so, so hard. Wow. It, oh, it was so hard. Oh. <laughs> I can't even tell you. <laughs> Let's see if there's any better. <clears throat> Let's see if that's any better. Because before I start talking, I want to make sure. Let's see now. How about this? I'm going to keep going until I find it. And since I am on a little bit of a lag, I'm going to wait. Did that pick up the audio at all? Everybody's looking at my sod. Yeah! Yeah! That's funny because I was just practicing with my microphone and it worked fine. Whew. How about now? Did it, did it, did the chat freeze? Pour the water to it. Grass is green and good. Oh, is it a little better now? Can you hear me a little better now? A little bit softer now, a little bit softer now. So my job now with this sod, if you can hear me, is to absolutely keep it, keep it green, keep it growing. I don't know why my, uh, my chat froze. Let's see windows, bring all to front, show all utility windows. Yeah, I guess that wasn't it. There we go. Oh, it's better. Good. Yay. So. I don't know if anybody's ever put down sod before. So not only with the shovel that I scraped down the crabgrass, I actually transplanted all my crabgrass, plovers, dandelions into the tortoise enclosure. So all my weeds and, and that kind of grass and greenery got transplanted into the one, two, three tortoise enclosures. Then I had to till everything. Now, of course, it was hot as all get out. And I, till, and I only did one patch at a time. And I kept doing one patch at a time. 
What is the fern at the bottom left of the screen? Oh. It looks like a Boston fern. I would say that's a Boston fern. I use the Boston ferns also for my um, waterfall because, let's see, is this it? Yes, because in order to really build a nice waterfall, you need a two-man rock or two-man boulder. Well, I'm a one woman and the one woman rock, uh, probably the only thing I'm gonna be able to lift up is that fern. So let me tell you, putting down this sod was unbelievable. Unbelievable. And yesterday it poured, thank goodness. Today, my plan is to water it using a pump in the pond and using fish nutrient heavy water. I'm hoping the nutrients in the pond gives it a little edge and I don't have to add chemical nutrients. But if anybody's ever put down sod, oh my gosh. First of all, I wanted to sleep on it when I put it down because it's so soft and it's just so luxurious. Now, I wish I had a picture from it before. It was like all mud, all thick, hard mud and dirt. Let's see what people are saying about the sod. Oh, we can hear you. Good. Yay. It is a beautiful plant. Thank you. So I have to water it when the sun goes down. Yes. It looks beautiful. Now I have to keep it alive because that was a lot of work. Back breaking heavy. Oh my gosh. Kind of work. What did Bob do? Oh my gosh. I see a blue dollar 99. Oh my gosh, who is this adorable, adorable character with sunglasses, little heart sunglasses and a bun on top of her head. Needs to be watered twice, twice a day, correct? I'm going to try real hard. I'm going to try so hard two or three times. And I was hoping when I turned down the weather, I saw five solid days of pouring rain. So I thought this is the time to do the sod. So I busted my hump getting the sod down before the rain started. First day sprinkled, out of water it. Second day, didn't rain at all. I'm like, thank you weathermen or women, whoever you are. Yesterday it did pour a lot and then today I watered it this morning and now I wanna water it with fish pond water because I'm thinking, Q, well done with the video setup. Thank you. So it does need to be watered twice a day. I got to go look at it again because I had so much. All I had was crabgrass. I didn't have any real grass. And look at this edging I did around the pond. I got plans for that. So I'm hoping and I had to use a lot of my flat rock in other projects. That's Bob with his mullet in a bun. <laughs> Here I want to bring in some topsoil, plant some plants, and get some like creeping jenny so it's kind of like blends in the land with the water and try to mesh the two. And I'm going to really work at smoothing that part out. But just cutting sod, squatting down on the ground, cutting sod, and I pretty much used overgrown scissors because I didn't have the right tools. <laughs> that was so not easy, but I think it was so worth it. And I just, no matter what, I have to get up and water it in the morning before I go to work, as soon as I get home from work, and then maybe before I go to bed and hope it rains. I hope it rains. I hope it rains. So that was my exciting news on the sod. Then I go out to my front porch and I had a box sitting there. I had a box from Roy from Spoiled Fish and look what I got. Yeah. Yeah, I feel a little spoiled. Upside down, that helps. <laughs> spoiled fish, yet there's more. Because you wouldn't put a sticker in a box now, would you? And look, it's got Hopi's turtle. Well, he's got three turtles, I think. So this looks like the Diamondback Terrapin. Now he's got a painted turtle, and I think he's got a map turtle. Pretty sure. Is he on here? If you're on here, I'd love to know if you have another turtle. 
I have 20 turtles. 20 turtles. And that's what I wanted to show you tonight. That I made a brand new turtle pond. So it wasn't enough that it was like 85 degrees out, sun beating on me. Knowing I'm setting down sod, I had to go dig another hole for a pond. My girlfriend said she had some of those tubs. If I wanted them, I could come get them. They were free. Well, that's my favorite. Free! So, I did put together a little video. Most of it's fast-forwarded. What do you call it? Time-lapse. Just to give you an idea, and I'll probably talk through it. Uh, if, if there's any audio in it, then I'll just, like, shut my yapper and listen. But let's see. This was... I, I think I'm just getting too old to keep digging holes. Let's see if I can show this. So yeah, so it's a time lapse. So the first thing I did was I dug down, not a whole lot of space here, not a whole lot of wiggle room. Now on the left is my eight foot by two foot turtle enclosure with a big- How far I got? This is for my baby turtles that are inside still. And I dug down, now I'm gonna level it. It's this pond it's for this pond that I just got I dug it down built some shelves intended it to be a little bit above ground but I think with the extra dirt it'll be even Just looking at it, let me tell you. Let me stop it here. So, uh, can you hear me? I'm gonna wait a second to see if you can hear me. I would assume you can hear me, but you know what happens when you assume. Did I go silent? <laughs> all right, well, I'm going to keep going. Okay, you can hear me good. So, I didn't want to fill it up all the way because I don't have an enclosure secure enough for baby turtles. They can slip through the cracks of that fence behind it. So, I had to make sure... I do move so fast, don't I, Fong? <laughs> I had to make sure that... The turtles are going to stay in the pond for now until I can figure out some absolute secure enclosures or what do you call it? fencing. Only because these turtles, uh, three of them are babies. Two of them are a year and a half old, but they're tiny. And I'm going to show you them in a moment. Here they come. No, here comes my dust bin because there is no way I was going to put water in this and then pump it out again. I was Mine was oval, and it was a uh, dig it. Oh my gosh, you're not kidding. You're not kidding. But it was so worth it. In the end. Even my water fills up fast, doesn't it? <laughs> Hopefully, this is the time. I. Hey, Spouse Aquatics, and we say what's up for the balls. Nice fun. Thank you so much. Speed racer, that's me, man. I wish it really was that fast. Because if I had seen a teenager walking by, I would have paid him to come in and dig. It was that back breaking. Got a little pond coordinator. Here we come. Let's hope we go. 
This is my dechlorinator. I actually used a pond de dechlorinator. Oh, Stephanie was so cute. <laughs> so I used the pond dechlorinator for the turtles. Oh, well, let me tell you, Steve, why this was a, this was a, this was tough. But because it's a little tilted, the back shelving, I put rocks on it, perfect for basket. So they can get up to the shelf area, but they can't get anywhere else. And I'm going to bring out my turtles now. So now it's time to put the turtles in the pond to see how they like it. Hopefully they came out quickly. Mm -hmm. clear. And the first up on my list is this adorable year and a half Eastern musk. Let's see here. Now look how tiny this turtle is. If she's not happy, she will ask absolutely musk me. Not a big basker, but I give her the opportunity. Yeah, I'm gonna stop there because this turtle is probably twice as old as the babies that are about to come out, and she's not gonna get much bigger than that. So I got to make sure she has a spot to bask, even though I have never seen her bask. She walks around the bottom all the time, comes up for air, but I very rarely see her bask. There we go. Put her in. So what's next? Diamondback Terrapin. Oh, My daughter so asked me to raise for one of her friends. Of course it's not coming in. So well, I think her friend left, so... Now this little cutie's mine. Make sure he knows where, because he loves to bask. Okay guys, sorry for the baby talk. For some reason, I can't help it when I got baby turtles in my hand. But this little Diamondback Terrapin has such personality and loves to bask. Arms pull out forward, back legs pull out forward. And then, two Western Painted Turtles. They said they were Western painted. Western painted. They're definitely painted turtles, male and female. Painted, look how beautiful. Turtles, look These are absolutely Southern painted turtles, which I'm fine with. I'm absolutely fine with, um, but they're not Western. They're Southern painted turtles. And they are adorable. One Hello, male, babies. Absolutely gorgeous. I was going to do a whole video just on painted turtles. Yeah. And these two, oh my gosh, they follow each other around. Yeah, let's so take a look at them. pretty much stays to themselves. And these guys have been inside my fish room. There we go. All One, summer so far, or all spring two, so far. And I really want to get them out. still there. But I didn't want to get them swallowed up by a big pond. Oh, yeah, look at me being tricky, guys. <laughs> That's my garbage can. <laughs> so I did add some frog bit. Let's see, I got some frog bit. I got creeping Jenny. I've got water celery. Um, what else do I have in here? Maiden's firm. I have a hyacinth. And I, I went around to all my ponds and got whatever frog bit I could find just to give them some shade. And now I'm starting to build up around it. I add a little fountain in the middle. Now the bottom of this fountain is actually a huge filter. It's a huge bio and sponge filter. And I had to put a rock on it because it kept floating up. Oh, and of course I got, had to get some more hibiscus for all my, um, for all my turtles love the hibiscus. And I'm still planting some of the plants, and I don't have any stonework yet. The only stones I put in were back there in the corner for the basket. Oh, Bob, nothing's wrong with southern. I love the southern. I was expecting western. So I was like, wait, he's got a stripe down there, back. Oh. So even though it's not complete, it's complete enough. Oh, oh yeah, I gotta show off my sod. Because I think I actually laid down in it. <laughs> so that is that. Let me get to some of the questions. Oh my gosh. I am so happy though that now all my turtles and tortoises are outside. 
Some of them I bring in with me at night, like my baby cherry head. I just want to make sure she still has enough moisture, so I don't want to leave her out. Uh, those baby turtles have been out since I built the pond. I have a little cover for it. Um, yeah, let me get to some of the questions. That looks good. Thank you. Tiny turtles. Uh, Aquafunk says, me and Maida are really talking about getting a land turtle. Awesome. Are you allowed to have box turtles or wood turtles? They stay nice and small. You can utilize like a swimming pool, well, like a sunken tub and land. They are great. Or if you want to get a tortoise, a Russian tortoise stays very small and it's a lot more affordable than an Egyptian tortoise. Do not get a sulcata. No, they only stay small for a couple of years. <laughs> what are you feeding them at the moment? Well, they get a whole variety of food. So I got the baby turtle um, pellets. I've got those that float and they can grab them. I have baby crickets. I get baby crickets for my frogs and I throw them in there. They can't get out of that tub and they have enough time to catch them before they drown. That is adorable because especially the diamondback because the diamondback will hold it and like rip apart the cricket. Um, what else do I give them? Oh my God. This. And the plants, the, the frog bit, not the water lettuce, the hyacinth, any plant that I put in there, they're going to, they're going to chomp on, devour, but they're so tiny. They're just going to make a little dent. If my redder slider was in there, all the plants would be gone. It, whether trampled on or eaten. <laughs> See, what else do I feed them? Worms. They love worms. They get the little tiny worms. Um, the juvenile tur turtles get uh, earthworms. And then, of course, my big Gina is this big, size of a dinner plate. And my redder slider, they get full-size earthworms. And they, they're they hand-fed. They're a little spoiled, just, just a little. Oh my gosh. Um, what's wrong with Southern Bob? Absolutely nothing. I love the Southern. <laughs> Don't go there. <laughs> Did you know stink pot turtles climb trees? How adorable. I'm going to have to put a tree inside the enclosure. I'm going to have to get it like a water tree. Well, actually, once the enclosure is sealed, I don't mind filling it up the whole pond so they can get on the land and out. I just need to make sure they can't get out of the land. And then I'll put a tree there for them to climb. I did not know that. Uh, I want to ride a turtle. Don't do it. Do you leave them outdoors during the cold season? So my yellow belly slider, Gina, this big, she overwintered in the pond and did fine. This year, my redder slider, which is in another pond that's two feet, the, the pond that's out front, I'm going to leave her out there too. Um, there, But the other ones, I do not. I have... One, two, three, four, five, six, 20 gallon longs, all side by side with those turtle toppers on top. And that's where I bring them in for the winter. Uh, most of them have one, two turtles. Then the smaller babies have three or four turtles in them. And on the floor, I have some of those black Home Depot buckets. And if you squeeze them side by side, they don't bow out. So that's what I do for the winter only because I'm, I don't want to lose any of my turtles. I love my turtles. My tortoises, none of them have overwintered, although I think they would do fine. It's not going to happen. I just can't do it. No, I can't do it. So those turtles have to come in. My three Russian tortoises, I got a 2.1, which is two females and a male. They all summer, all through the fall, they will never come inside the house. They have their own house that's about two foot by one foot. Then they got a six foot and 12 foot run that I plant hibiscus in there, and now they got tons and tons and tons of uh, weeds and grass and then I just got I don't want to say anything until they're out of quarantine uh, I can't keep a secret though I'm gonna keep a secret uh, but I'm gonna show a video on them once they're out of quarantine because when they're in quarantine I'm gonna wait about four to six weeks and I'm gonna keep feeding them I test their poop under a microscope for some of you that might sound gross but for me, it's pretty exciting because I'm going to make sure there's nothing in the poop, if you know what I mean. Oh, my gosh. Thank you again, Roy. This is awesome. Nice shirt. Ah, thank you. Whoop. I got that last year for 
big, I turned, I got 25 years sobriety and turned 60 all in the same year. That was pretty, uh, pretty traumatic if you ask me. <laughs> oh my gosh, love it. I do, I do too. Thank you so much. This is absolutely my peaceful place. How big do they get? The Eastern musk turtles are going to stay small. They're probably going to stay about that small. Probably won't get bigger than four inches. The, both the redder slider is probably at full size. I adopted them when they were 12, when she was 12. Size of a dinner plate. The red, the yellow belly slider, the size of a dinner plate. I have some terrapins that will probably get about eight inches. I've got Louie over there, the baby you just saw, and one in the juvenile. This galvanized, beautiful 300 gallon holds all my juvenile turtles. And the Reeves turtle stay pretty small. The Reeves turtle is another one that I want to make their own enclosure, but because they like land and water. So I need to, like, I would love to somehow or another someday get some, like, those turtle land tubs where you can fill it with water and you have land. But until then, I'm probably just going to have to make something. Um, just going to have to make something. And I was thinking, like, maybe putting a, a 10 gallon aquarium inside a 55 gallon aquarium and then you know like filling it with dirt so that they had both or something like that that's what i was thinking for my reeves turtle which i thought was mr and mrs reeves but they're mrs and mrs reeves nobody judges and what else do i have eastern painted turtles i have an eastern painted turtle she'll probably get about eight inches well nine inches because she's a she um mrs two i got a mississippi map turtles I'd have to be in front of the tub. What am I missing? I'm missing my lovey-dovey. Who's that? And then Gina. Oh my gosh, she overwinters. She overwinters. She's my yellow belly slider. I have a smaller yellow belly slider that's probably four years old. That's only this big. I was thinking about putting her in the pond, but I'm going to wait until... Do you see this wooden... I'd show you. It's really just stacked like Lincoln Logs. So if one of those big turtles came up and actually tried to push it, the whole thing would come tumbling down. I am trying to figure out how to put that together so it's sturdy myself. Because I keep asking John for help and I'm just going to have to do it myself. Or get wrought iron fencing and just, you know, push it down and be done with it. But something so that I do want to try to put the yellow belly. But it has to be a time. So I've been working this whole time. And I'm thinking if I put the other yellow belly in the big pond, I have to be home and really watch. I'll probably even sleep out here. I, I wouldn't, I don't even know if I'd be able to sleep knowing that she was in that big pond, but I'd have to watch to see if that's okay. But when I was doing the 90% water change, I put Gina in her pond. Oh my gosh. And they got along great. She like just, they got along great. I thought that was so adorable. Not that turtles need friends. Trust me. They don't need anybody. Well, they need me. <laughs> I play that in my head. Small Fry Aquatics. I've teased my wife for years. The weatherman is the same guy you dated once he called, but never did. And you keep believing him. Yeah. <laughs> That's how big they get, Diva. Susie, you sing like Caitlin Doherty on YouTube. Oh, I sing like a cat in heat. Who are you kidding? I pretend you know what the thing is I don't care because I love to sing my mom always told me because there's times I sang in the church choir where you know the guy in charge told me to like just mouth the words a little bit you know who does that but anyway I love to sing I sing loud and strong maybe just not on key but Jimmy cracked corn cool shirt thank you thank you Little Herman's tortoises, yes. They get a little bit bigger, but they're very personable. Oh my gosh. Just make sure, funk, whatever you get, get a captive born and bred. You are going to save so much. You're going to spend twice as much for it, but you're going to save so much money on vet bills and deworming and all that kind of stuff that comes along with... And if you get wild caught 
sometimes, you know, the turtles aren't meant to be taken out of the wild. They get disoriented, especially if it's like a box turtle. He could get disoriented and forever try to find his way home. It's almost heartbreaking. But if you get a captive born and bred, you pay a little bit more in the beginning, but you get a healthy turtle and you can start off scratch. Not to say I don't have any, I do have one, two, three, four of mine are wild caught because I adopted them, but they are wild caught. What is that? What is that? What a great Sunday spending time with your great people. Or I'm stalking you. Uh-oh. Phil's on his soapbox and he's stalking us. I love it. Dang it. I want to see now. Cam, what do you want to see? What did I miss? Okay, Dragon Lair says, Q. Funk is being obstinate. Duh. Funk, you need Aldabra. Oh, and 40 years to be able to ride it. So Cottas can't carry a human adult. Yeah, no. 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 Hey, Stalker Phil. So Phil's got a new nickname, Stalker Phil. Funk, my Hermans I've raised from babies follow me around. Absolutely. They come when you call. They put themselves to bed. And when they hear that lettuce getting crunched up or carrots being broken up, oh, mine. Mine come running. Like, like. And I got two sulcatas. They come running. My, I have a female Russian tortoise, which is twice the size of the other female and male. And she will just step over everybody to get to the food. She has demolished that whole hibiscus tree. <laughs> every flower, every leaf. I just went to Home Depot and got five more hibiscus trees. And I keep planting them in there for them. I currently have six turtles. Soggy pits. He's got six turtles in my house right now. Three striped mud turtles, one eastern musk turtle, and four red ear sliders. What are you keeping your red ear sliders in? Man, they're the size of dinner plates. Do you have a built-in pond? Oh, I can't wait to hear what you keep your red ear sliders in. Because I love the sliders, man. They've got such big heads. Dang, it's storming here. Lost internet for a bit. I'm a little worried. Although I want it to rain for my sod, I want to wait till I take down all this stuff before it rains. Uh-oh, it hurt my feelings. Greetings, Sue, from Jamaica. Hey, Riley, how are you? They made you leave the choir good, so you get it. But guess what? Do you like to sing? I sing anyway. Although, I very rarely sing in public unless I'm just goofing around. And like, here I'm just goofing around, so it's not real singing. But when I really try to sing, like I sing to Sophie all the time. Uh, you are so beautiful to me. You are my sunshine, my only, and, but I sing it with all my heart and it comes out literally like a cat howling. And I don't care because she comes right up to me with her beak and she tilts her head. It's just adorable. So John played a song on the radio for her. It's all about that beast, about that beast. Well, she started dancing and singing. Oh my gosh, she just, he, he was in heaven. He was in heaven. So yes, I do try to sing super serious with Sophie, especially at bedtime, to calm her down. Because when I say lights off, you know, she has a hissy fit. So that's what she does. So I got to sing to her nice and soft. I sing a lullaby and yeah. Yeah, that's what I do. You're hiding what you got from us, Susie. I am. And I'm so stinking excited. <laughs> it's so hard. Let's see what you got. Sue, you have a wonderful pond with that bridge. Thank you so much. I absolutely love my bridge. Wish I could post photos here. Went to wetlands yesterday and came up with a couple of real nice shots of the turtles there. Small Fry Aquatics. Do you have Instagram? Post them on Instagram and then I will follow you and then I can see your pictures. That's my favorite place to go for pictures is Instagram. Oh my gosh. Tell them why you're mad. Yeah. Tell them why you're mad. Who's mad? Uh-oh. What did Aquafunk do? Who's mad? <laughs> and is it Aquafunk? <laughs> oh my gosh. We only got 30 likes and 50 people. 50 people. Thank you, God. 
Rockford Fish Keeping. Hey y'all, oh my God, I love that backyard. Thank you, I'm gonna show you guys another shot of my grass because I'm so silly proud of it. Look at this, okay. So over here, just to get a better understanding, this right here is a turtle enclosure that's eight foot by two foot. Right there is a baby pond I just showed you. Up here is a two-tiered pond with a waterfall. This is the Russian tortoise enclosure. This is their run. They can run from there. Well, they don't run, they walk. All the way behind there. And this is in a netting, so there's no critters that can get to them at night. And then their house is behind that tub. This in this enclosure is two sulcatas. They're are two and a half, maybe three years old, so they're still small. They're about that big and they put themselves to bed there and there with Timothy Hay. And then they have grass and weeds and uh, hibiscus as well. This pond here has my Louie, my diamondback and Yertle, no, Turdy. Turdy and the two sulcatas were given to me by a guy from work. And then here is my amazing sod. I just gotta keep it green. And then this, if you guys know, is my 2,000 gallon pond, my trash pick, very proud of my trash pick fence or my bridge. Love it, love it, love it. I have plants around, but I don't have too many aquatic flowers yet. And I don't know if it's because I did a 90% water change and disrupted everybody, but then back here are my summer tubs. So this is a 300 gallon tub that's got uh, juvenile turtles in it. Then here is my live bearer tub. It's got my um, sword, swordfish, swordtail fish, and guppies. This 100 gallon Rubbermaid has Danios, my long fin Danios, and don't judge my glowfish Danios because in the outside summer pond, they just looked adorable and I never had glowfish before, so don't judge me. <laughs> And that's all the things except for in the front yard, I have a pond for my big red ear slider. Now Gina's in this pond. She might even come out. Come out, come out, Gina. Gina will come when she's called. She's my yellow belly slider. She'll come when she's called and she'll eat right out of my hands. Now I was gonna do my live stream from in the grass area, but I know I have to stay off of it. Although I can't help myself. It is so soft and so lush. Oh my gosh. Small fryer quacks on Instagram. Thank you, Candy. Now I can look at your pictures. Trinity Phoenix, Phoenix one up. That's Melvin, right? Why we only got 30 likes? Oh, that I saw that one. Thank you. Hey, Craig. Okay, who's Craig? Who, who, who's, what YouTube channel is Craig? I don't know that one. Melvin always makes fun of my name, Madfish. <laughs> Wait, Melvin. Melvin. I won't go there. Melvin, stay safe. Your yard is amazing. I am absolutely loving it, Mary. I am absolutely loving it. It's a lot of work. A lot of work. Oh, let me go over there. Let's see if we can see this. I don't know. So if you look closely, there are koi in this pond. Now it's only 2,000 gallons, so I have four koi. And, oh, you can see Gina. Can you see Gina? She's under the bridge. Let me see if I can point to her. Where's my hand? Oh, it's way over here. She is right there. Oh, I can't do my hand. She's sticking her head up. Oh, Gina. I do. I have some four koi in there, and in the front pond, I have three baby koi that I don't want to put in the fish because Gina um, will snack on a goldfish here and there. She just, just, you know, every once in a while I find a head, which I can't blame her because she's a turtle. And I went in this with my eyes wide open. Craig is small fry. Oh, now I know. My ex-husband's name was Craig. Not was Craig, is Craig. Was husband, is Craig. <laughs> Trinity Phoenix. Diva, I don't make fun of your name. It's because your names remind me of the skit. In Harlem. 
album, The Mad Rapper. Uh-oh. Posted the turtles on Instagram. I can't wait to see. I have a duckweed problem, I think. Oh, my gosh. Doesn't your turtles eat the duckweed? My turtles love duckweed. But the problem is they don't eat it as fast as it multiplies. So there's times my turtles come up from underwater and they're wearing a duckweed hat. And I mean, it doesn't hurt them, but it, it bothers me. It bothers me a little bit. My local fish store said I can drop off duckweed. I hate to let anything just go in the bin. Oh, I'm with you on that one. And especially if your local fish store might trade you for like a jar of food, maybe. Like, that's pretty cool. Small fry aquatics. In all seriousness. Uh-oh. In all seriousness. I got to get all serious here. Better read this. Keep it soaked. Oh, okay, keep it soaked. If you let dry out even the least little bit, it will die. And there's no bringing it back. Oh, I'm going to do it as soon as this live stream's over. Funk, I'm going to listen to your live stream while I'm watering my sod. Because I do not want... Now, if you guys, you've done sod, what is it, would it help if I watered my sod with the pond water? That's my big question. I don't want it to die. One of my six inch jewel cichlids tried to eat the bristle nose. Oh my gosh, that's horrible. <laughs> Trini says, wow, the pond looks amazing to you. I love the bridge. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So hey, I definitely have to. Like, There was so many things to go over today that I didn't think I was gonna be able to get it all out. So I probably talked fast. I know I sped up that video super fast but I really wanted to see, and I wish my cameras were not tethered by this wire so I could take you over there. And maybe I'll do like an actual video on it just to see it once the uh, rock work is done and the enclosure's finished so that the little turtles can bask out in the dirt and back in. Yeah, it will help, yes, but most important is keeping it wet. Okay, so keep it wet to where the ground under it is wet correct because i can water it for half hour and i don't think it's really wet i had duckweed duckweed and i thought i had it all but i look and i have a big patch again yeah i have tried on several times to rid my fish room of duckweed i give up i give up i don't think i can rid my fish of duckweed you know how I could do it? If I had one of those fish rooms that had a floor that had a drain built into it, because if I flooded some of my tanks, I think all the duckweed would float right out, right? That, but I don't, so I don't want to go and do that. It's not a matter of healthy water. It's a matter of moisture. It needs to be soaked so the roots that are at the bottom find their way into the dirt that's below. Got it. I sure would hate for any of this to die. I did so, <laughs> I can't even explain. Anybody who's laid sod knows I've done so much just to get it laid down. And this is after planting grass seed. But planting grass seed here where I walk on it all the time, all my animals are outside, all my pleasure is outside, everything I do is outside. It's really hard to stay off of it. So the grass seed didn't work so well. So. At first, I was only going to do in front of the shed because six pieces of sod was hard. <laughs> that was hard enough. And then I did, like, I went to Home Depot and got four more. And then John came home and said, well, why don't we do all of it? I'm like, that's like 19 more pieces of sod. Of course, I measured. And I was one off. Short. One short. But he said, let's do it. And when I thought, when he said, let's do it, I thought he meant let's us both do it. I was wrong. <laughs> but he did help a little. He drove the truck. He loaded everything into the truck and helped me unload it. Helicopter. But I have to say, because I'm a stickler for details and I wanted to make sure the scene was perfect and I was thinking about, because I saw a YouTube video that said, put topsoil in between the seams, push it down, and put grass seed on it. I didn't know if that was worth it or not. Katie's almost living the dream. Hey, Katie. 
What is it, Katie, that you would need to do to be living the dream? Why are you almost living the dream? I would love to hear that story and how that became your name because that's an awesome name. It was, it was, I think it was too much work for me. About halfway through now, I was drinking a gallon jug of water throughout the, the day. And at one point I just sat down, I, I overdid it. Like, I don't know why I can't stop when I get hot or headache and I just overdid it. Q Aquatics, I use the Python water changer and invert it so it skims the surface sucks it right out okay so I'm confused okay Rockford when I use my Python everything is getting sucked into my Python into the tube into the little knobbers and into my sink which I could use a, a net to catch it but how do I know I ever get it out of my Python Unless you mean, but when you say invert, you mean something I don't get. GRB Aquatics. Good day, Susie. And everyone, well, good day to you. Mean Mug. How's everyone doing tonight? Mean Mug, do you really got a mean mug? Mm, mean Mug. <laughs> Some of these names, man, you guys are so creative. I love it. I would love to hear what you mean by inverted Python. Hopefully you're typing, although I know there's a lag, so I got to put this back on. Oh, oh, I had the wrong one on. <laughs> Did I tell you I'm missing my little yellow koi? I went to a store, Mark DeNero's store. He manages a fish store seven miles from me. Now, if you don't know Mark DeNero, he's pretty big in the fish keeping hobby. He's written articles. He's written books. He's, um, he's just... A great all-around guy he's gone uh, what do you call it you know what I mean he's an all-around great guy very big been fish keeper for a very long time very very knowledgeable he runs a fish store he does unboxings um, all natural aquatics he does unboxings every time his store gets fish in which is great for me because I live seven miles away so if he's getting something I'll just go there but he was selling beautiful butterfly koi and a big part of me doesn't never wanted to get a bright yellow koi because I live between a canal and a river and you know I don't want to attract herons I don't want to attract like anything shiny um, but this yellow koi was amazing gorgeous shiny shimmery bright bright yellow long flowing fins can't find her anywhere. I can't find her and I'm so upset. Is that a yellow calla lily I see over your left shoulder? Yes, it is. Let's see. This one might show it. So what I did behind my waterfall is I've got two calla lilies two different ferns, like the rabbit fern, and I forget what the other one is called. Some impatience, some portulaca, just to fill in the blanks, and it's right next to a lilac tree. The whole idea was for my waterfall to come out of my lilac tree. But it was supposed to be surrounded by boulders. As you know, I can't pick up the boulders, so on this side I have a fern, and on the other side I have a double flowering impatience. But yes, I love those yellow, love them. So Katie's almost living the dream. Oh, UPS are living the dream. I won't say what it means publicly. Nothing bad. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I'm floating the rumor duckweed is endangered. <laughs> Oh, I left my oven light on and spread duckweed on a tray on wax paper. It was bone dry overnight and then put it in a spice grinder, mixed it in with my rapashi bottom scratcher. That's ingenious. 
that's what I keep saying about this water hyacinth. Well, the, the turtles will eat the water hyacinth, but the water lettuce, nobody eats the water lettuce. That multiplies so quickly, there's got to be something I can do with the water lettuce to be useful. Katie, tell us Tuesday at the meetup. Wait, what meetup? What meetup? Love calla leaves. Me too. And I'm in love with your backyard. Thank you, Katie. I want to know what meetup you guys are going to. Now I'm all jealous. And I'm all jealous. I'm in Pennsylvania. If I can separate the duckweed from the snails, I will try. I love snails. So I got my two green spotted puffers, my fahaka puffers, and my pea puffers all love snails. I can't grow enough snails. I cannot multiply enough snails. Okay, so here we go with the inverted python. Dip the whole gavel back part of the water and turn it upside down and bring it to the surface so you start sucking air. Drop it back into the tank and the surface skims. Might have to read that again. Yeah, Bob is in big trouble now. Big trouble. Did you hear the screams of the duckweed? <laughs> hey, Daniken. <laughs> Oh, funk is in 10 minutes. Wow, this flew by. Oh my gosh. Hey, Crystal. This tonight flew by. This was crazy. Oh my gosh. I'm going to have to read that inverted thing again and, and let it soak in because I can't imagine what you're saying. I, just, I can't imagine what you're saying. And I still don't see anybody talking about a meetup. And I'm waiting. I'm waiting. Hey, Peplin Creek. Peplin Creek Aquatics. I love it. Punchy pants. I say punchy pants. I know it's paints, but I say punchy pants. Look at this spoiled fish. Thank you so much, Roy. Oh my gosh. I don't even know what I did to deserve this. A coffee cup. I, got, I, I love coffee. Mm. Ooh. Did I see Zen Ginger in the house? Tonight, it's a fun night. Oh, I like fun nights. If you think it's going to be fun, you got to stop over at Aquafunk. Aquafunk Aquatics Channel, no doubt in my mind. My phone is 100%. Good. Good, because I hope you're going to do it. And we got to come up with a hashtag for Aquafunk. I need some suggestions. Rockford, I'll try to take a video of what I do tomorrow when I do water change and since the tank needs it. Perfect. Perfect. Susie. Susan from SLC Aquatics is traveling through. Katie, Roe, Chattanooga Ed, Fish Room Fever, and myself are having coffee with her. It's a southern thing. How long would it take me for me to jump on my motorcycle and drive to your southern thing? Hashtag turtles. I love it, Candy. Hashtag turtles. That is the hashtag we're going to use for funk. Hashtag turtles. Oh, we're throwing a curveball now. Throwing a curveball, Candy. Definitely a southern thing. Oh, man. Southern like in like Alabama, South Carolina, Tennessee. By the way, John Bag of Donuts is a Titans fan. Been his whole life. And he lives in this area his whole life, and he's a Titans fan. Titans fan. Southern thing. Ah, oh, that sounds like fun. 11 hours. Yeah, that's too far. That's too far. So I was talking to Elizabeth from One Fish, Two Fish, ROC. And we were talking about meeting somewhere up in like, maybe in the Albany, New York area. That's like halfway for her, halfway for me. And if we do that, we'll put the word out. Anybody out there that wants to meet up with us. I don't know. Do they serve food in New York? New York, New Jersey, and Pennsylvania, man, they really suck. We're still on house arrest and... You know, you got that yellow light, green light, red light stop. Like, oh my gosh. Now, I see people outside eating. I don't know if there's, but we want to have a meetup because we haven't seen each other in a long time. And how great would it be just to whoever was in the area wants to come? But that's not a southern thang. Let's say that's a, that's a northern thang. You can't say thang. Northern thing. <laughs> Tennessee. Oh my gosh. John's going to be so jealous. 
Tennessee Titans, man, that's his gig. Ah, that is his gig. And everybody around here makes fun of them because you know they don't win. I'll try to take a good. Perfect. Oh, my gosh. Thank you so much, everybody, for coming out tonight. And I hope everybody had an amazing... It's still ridiculous in Pennsylvania. Thank you, Mean Mug. That gives me a Mean Mug. Pennsylvania, man. Uh, yeah. He's just... Ugh. L-M-B-O. 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 The furthest I've ever rode is about six hours to North Carolina. That's about all my right hand and back could take. Guess what, Katie? I've got this little plastic thing that goes on the accelerator. And all it is is like a little um, rest for your palm. And once it's set up, if you do this, you have acceleration. It's almost like you don't need to grab onto anything. So if you're doing a lot of highway riding, it's almost like as good as a cruise control because you just rest it. It's changed my life, changed my riding. I went out to Erie, went down to Virginia. I went up to um, Boston. Love it. Absolutely love it. Peplin Creek says, thank you for the scream. Love your backyard. Thank you. I'm going to put on my grass before I go. Oh, because I la 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 love it. Love it. Laughing my butt off. Oh my gosh, Bob, you're so proper. Because I'm pretty sure that's not how the saying goes. I got four daughters, and that's not what they say. <laughs> no, guys, thank you for the stream. And I'm going to see you guys at Aquafunks. But what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be listening. I'm not going to be able to be talking because I'm going to be watering my grass. I do not want this to get dry out. And if I have to stand out here for an hour, I will stand out here as long as it takes to make sure every inch of it is saturated. So thank you so much, guys, for coming out. I want to say everybody, everybody, happy Father's Day. Uh, I'm kind of new. Whereabouts you located? Me? I'm like northeast of Philadelphia, kind of in Pennsylvania near Trenton, like in Lower Bucks. Thanks for the stream cue. Thanks, Mod. Happy Father's Day all here. And don't forget, we're going to do hashtag turtles. Hashtag, is this it? Hashtag? Hashtag turtles. You know, hashtag turtles. Uh, tank water would be great for your lawn. Tank water and pond water. Because guess what? You know what? Hey, everybody, it's Susie Q, and I'm here to show you just what I do. I have a passion for fish and exotics, too, so come along with me, it's Susie Q. Hey, everybody, it's Susie Q, and I'm here to show you just what I do. I got a passion for fish and exotics, too, so come along with me, it's Susie Q. Hey, everybody. Everybody, it's Susie Q, and I'm here to show you just what I do. I have a passion for fish and exotics, too, so come along with me, it's Susie Q. Hey, everybody, it's Susie Q. Hey, everybody, it's Susie Q. Nah, nah, hey, everybody, it's Susie Q, so come along with me. Said 